second session, session two of our campaign um, called Relatable. And most of the koinonias by this time should have already been in um, part one, part one of our, of our campaign. And session two talks about um, the man and the woman in the mirror. So as the, the title goes, it talks about self-reflection, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror. So every time you look at yourself in the mirror, what is the first thing that you notice? Or let me rephrase that. What's the first thing that you look for? I guess it's different for many, for many of us, but I'm guessing that probably most of us, the first thing that we notice or even look for is the physical defects, right? Ano yung, oh, may wrinkle na ako dito. May tigyawat ako. Or uh, my, my gray hairs are already starting to come out. Right? I don't blame you. I think it's normal for us because the outward appearance is the first thing that we see, right? That's the first thing that we notice. But right at the bat, I, will, I would like to remind us all that what you see in the mirror, the physical that you see in the mirror, is not everything there is. Outward lang po yan. And I'm not sure if you've noticed the new cars right now when you... When you the new released cars, yung mga passenger side, side mirrors, there's a text there that's actually etched. And it goes, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. So if you haven't seen that, probably when you ride a taxi, take a look at it. It's there. And the purpose for that is to remind the drivers that even if you see that the car seems to be far away, it's actually closer. It could be closer than they appear. So it's a reminder for us that not everything you see in the mirror that is everything that there is. May something more pa dyan than what you can see. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, let me ask you this. Do you talk to yourself and ask yourself, how much is this guy worth? How much is this person worth? Do you, do you ask yourself that? Do you ask yourself if you matter in this world? Oh, okay, Matt, world can be a big, a, a big scope. It's okay, do you matter even in your community? Have you asked yourself that? You know, it's not a normal thing for us to think about that. So let's do a certain assessment. I'm going to help you through a certain... I'll put us in a certain scenario, and then from there, probably you can answer this question better. So 23 years ago, the year is 1998, there was a movie, a sci-fi disaster film called Deep Impact. I'm not sure if you've watched it. If you haven't watched it, it's still available online. I've checked. So the story is a comet is in a collision course with Earth. And of course, when it was discovered, the world leaders got together and sent a team to space to obliterate this comet and remove the threat. So when they did that, guess what? The mission failed. Of course, where's the fun in that? Kung successful sila the first time, di ba? So the mission failed. But then, back on the surface, the President of the United States, played by Morgan Freeman, if you like Morgan Freeman, watch it, he announced to the, to the American population that while this was happening, the United States government was actually starting to dig a series of cave networks that would withstand the impact of this comet and preserve human life. But the only caveat there is that this cave can only accommodate a million people. Compare that to the total population of the U.S., that's, that's a little bit of a fraction. That's a little fraction of it, right? Alaki ng U.S. eh, one million lang pwede. And the way that they designed this is 200,000 of that is gonna be pre-selected. And the 800,000 is by national lottery. That's what he announced. Now, according to, according to him, the 200,000 people were selected based on a certain criteria. And these were composed of scientists, teachers, soldiers, artists that they considered as vital to preserve the human way of life, the current way of life. So let me put us in that situation. If this happened in Singapore or your home countries, right? So those who are watching us um, online, if this happened in our countries, do you think you matter enough? to be included in the pre-selected 200,000. You think so? Now, to answer this question, I know you had to draw out from within your own opinion of yourself. Do you really matter? And that is very much influenced also by what other people tell you. You think about, 
nga, no? May isip kaya ako ng gobyerno na i-include sa 200,000? Right? And to some, probably it's an automatic no. Ang bilis natin maka-answer, no. I don't think so. Why? Because we consider and we see ourselves as ordinary citizens of the land. Everything that we think of ourselves has been influenced by years of, our, of encounters of different people. It's been influenced by our circumstances and the consequences of our decisions. Human beings have actually come up with this system to measure ourselves with. A certain criteria, a parameter, a trait, characteristic, whatever you want to call it, that they measure ourselves and others upon. And let me just, for the purpose of our conversation, let's just focus on four. So, the first one is physical appearance. How do you look like? Cute ka ba? Next is popularity. Marami ka bang followers? Do you have a million likers sa social media? Next is possessions. How much do you have? How many? It's almost like the gauge of success. If you have so much, you're more su- the more you have, the more successful you are. The last one is performance or achievements. Many things, siguro, like, like we know, I'm, I'm not saying everybody, but many, many doctors may think that they're more valuable than the nurses. Many doctors may think that they're more valuable than the engineers in the society. But there's a problem with this. The problem with this is that if we spend our lives trying to tick all of these aspects of our life, if we want to tick all of this, check tayo lang lahat, it's like a checklist. We're just setting ourselves up for unrealistic standards for ourselves. And what's worse, what's worse, even if you get there, it doesn't lead to fulfillment, I guarantee. It won't lead to fulfillment. Now you ask, why do we need to, ta- why do we need to talk about this today? Ano bang, ano bang relevance nito? Especially in the now. Okay, so allow me to share with you. As I was researching on, for this conversation, I came across REBT. It stands for Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. And this is a, an offshoot of CBT, or Cognitive Behavior Therapy, that was founded by a renowned American psychologist named Dr. Albert Ellis. So he's very famous. Even until now, his work still continues. You can Google him. So REBT is an action-oriented approach that focuses on helping people deal with irrational beliefs and learn how to manage them, manage their emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in a healthier and more realistic way. The core concept of REBT is the ABC model. I'll show that in a little while. ABC model. So the, the concept of REBT says that while we blame, while we blame our external circumstances, the things that we don't control, we blame it for unhappiness. The reality is, it is our interpretation of those events that, is, that truly lies at the heart of our psychological distress. Let me just give you an example later, but let me explain first. ABC stands for A, activating event. B, the second stage, papasok na yung belief. Then followed by C, which is the consequence, which is the action that you're gonna do in response to the event. Just say, for example, a colleague sent an email to his boss. He was giving suggestions on how to make the project better. And then this, this boss did not reply. In 48 hours na, two days na nakalipas, hindi pa nag-reply. So, there are two types of mindsets I'm going to present here. The first mindset is, if he's just a regular employee, normal thinking, everything is okay, everything is the average, he will, th- he will think, oh, boss might just have been busy for the past two days. Sige nga. So what does he do? He responds by sending a follow-up email. Hey, boss, um, do you, what are your thoughts about what I emailed you? But for the second person, who probably has issues or dealing with issues of insecurity, his mindset will be, I knew it. I think my boss is not reading my emails. I knew it. My suggestions are all nonsense to him. I think I'm never going to bloom in this job. I think it's time to move on. So what does he do? What he does is he starts looking for a new job. Right? Right? So these are two different people, 
exposed to the same event. The same event. It's the same situation. And yet the response are totally different. Why? Actually, it is based on B, their belief. Their belief system plays a major part on the decisions that they make. And why is this important to us? Because if we are to lead Christ-like lives, if we are to make godly decisions, we need to make sure that our belief systems are aligned with God's. We need to make sure of that. And if that belief system is corrupted by something else, I'm telling you, the people will have irrational beliefs, irrational thoughts, and that is going to create problems in the end. So today, I want to encourage us. While the sad reality of the time is that people define us based on all the parameters that I have mentioned earlier, while people are the ones who are telling us how much we're worth, I want to encourage us today that we don't need to confine or define ourselves based on those criteria. I want to encourage you today that our lives, your lives individually, are equally significant. Today, I want us to discover together our worth through God's perspective, through the man, through the account of a man named Zacchaeus. I'm sure the name sounds familiar. Zacchaeus, they were familiar. Siya. So, to those who are taking notes, please allow me to give a title to our conversation today Intrinsic Value. You know what intrinsic means? It means real value that is not defined by external events or external factors, intrinsic value. And we'll be picking up from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And if there's one thing that I'd like us to keep on our minds, keep, us, keep remembering, and keep running in our thoughts as we're running through this conversation, and even after you, go, you have gone home and as we live our daily lives, it's this, that God sees you through to your true value. Nakikita ka ng Panginoon, but He doesn't just stop at what people see. He sees right into you, down to your innermo innermost core, down to your intrinsic value, which, by the way, He defined. Siya ang nag-define ng intrinsic value natin because He's the one who created us. Let's start with verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Jesus on this time was already on his way back to Jerusalem. So yung triumphal entry, you know, you know that's ano, parang the, the Palm Sunday. So he was on, already towards the end of his earthly ministry. So at this time, he was already famous. So you would imagine that the people of Jericho, when they heard that Jesus was passing through, they would already like, nagready na sila. They want to meet this guy. Right? So people were gathered because Jesus was gonna pass, was gonna pass through. Then, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. So he was a chief tax collector, and he was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So in Luke, he was actually trying to describe Zacchaeus. We're introduced to our main character here. Luke was describing him as tall, dark, and never mind. Tax collector, wealthy, Short. Let me just break through to you. Let, kilalanin natin si Jacquios. Who is he? So first, he is a tax collector. Do you know that during that time, tax collectors were considered traitors? Why are they considered traitors? Because there were Jews who was working for the interest of the ancient Roman government, which they considered as their oppressors, working for the enemy. What do you call that? Traitor, di ba? We call that traitor. So they were, he, was, he was called a traitor. If there was a list, siguro, of the most hated people in the community, I think it would be them. I think it would be them. So they really did not like the tax collectors. And he was wealthy. Of course, what do you expect, diba? Right? So during that time, the tax collectors did not have regular wages like us, like monthly, um, like mga bonus. They didn't have that. So what they did is they just collected from the people what was due to the Roman government and then they just put something on top, my patong. And that patong is what they kept for themselves. And at that time, wala pang BIR. No regulation. So they can put as much as they can. So people saw it as they were extorting them. And you would think because of his wealth, because of his wealth, 
Ang ganda siguro ng bahay niya. You know, if it were the modern days, it would be a mansion with a fountain up front and a pool in the backyard, right? And every time people saw that, sakit sa puso. Because that house was built over the labor of many people. Right? Siguro gusto nga nilang batuhin eh. But they can't because he was protected by the Roman government. And then the third one, he was short. So I was looking at other translations, just to be sure. Other translations. May mga documentary pa. Para hindi lang ako, baka, baka sabihin nyo, judgmental ako. But he did not, he was not just described as short. He was described as a dwarf. So he was not just a bit short. He was really short. If we would like to assess Zacchaeus' position based on the four criteria that we've had mentioned earlier, assess natin si Zacchaeus. Okay, here. Physical appearance. 50%. Sige, chance. 60%. How about popularity? Do you think he was popular among the people? If it were in the today's context, IGFB, marami kaya siyang likes, marami siyang followers. X or heart? X, right? Yes, he was popular, but he was popular for the wrong reasons, right? How about possessions? Possessions, do you think? Oh, heart, heart daw. Of course, we'll give it to him. Kasi marami siya, may mansion siya. Check tayo dyan. Then performance, achievements. Do you think... He was someone who was considered to have contributed to the society. Kung may approval rating at that time, like our politicians now, do you think he would have a very high approval? Wakayang mahiya, X talaga yan. So, you will think, you will see that if we gauge the keys according to our standards now, he only passes one out of four of those criteria. Can you relate? Can you relate? Diba, I asked you a question earlier. I think ganun din yung tingin sa sarili natin eh. That's how we see ourselves. Hindi naman ako gwapo. Hindi naman ako maganda. Yung ano ko, income ko is just so-so. That's how we see ourselves, diba? Just like Zacchaeus, we're actually in the same position. Problem na, we're in a better position than Zacchaeus eh. Because this guy was not liked by the society. This guy was hated by people. And I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that. That ano yung position is a chaos society because that's very important as we unravel the next few verses. So now we go to the next one. So he ran, ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Of course, wala siyang choice, short siya So he had to go and climb a fig tree. And I want you to see that because I want us to imagine this together, this scenario, this scene. So he climbed the tree. So if you, if you look at that time when he ran and he climbed the tree, probably he was not able to climb it immediately kasi ang laki-laki ng trunk eh. Diba? And, the, and the clothes that they've had para silang ano, may palda before, it's, it's, it's actually difficult to climb that. So probably he climbed and slid back and climbed and slid back. You know? And because he was not liked by the people, people would have already been laughing at him. Don't you see? Zacchaeus was doing something out of character here. When he did, he was wealthy. He could have just paid his way through, through the crowd. He could have just hired bodyguards to say, okay, tabi mo yung mga taong yan. Gusto ko meet Jesus, di ba? He did not do that. What he did is, he helped himself. He ran and he climbed the tree. Very out of character. That simply speaks of something. He, there was something in him that was happening as he heard about Jesus. He, when he climbed the tree, he was there, sitting there waiting for Jesus to pass by. And in the next verse, it says, So when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now, to me, this might just look like an ordinary verse. It, it did to me for the longest time. Because one of my favorite stories is sa, sa Sunday school. Because I really like to Umakyat ng bayabas. Guava tree. You would think, if you imagine this scene with me, actually, this scene was full of emotion. Don't you see the emotion here? Okay, I'll break it down for you. I'll break it down for you. When Zacchaeus climbed that tree, I would assume, imagine na ako dito, I would assume that he was trying to be out of frame. Sa mga photographers natin, that's the term. He wanted to be out of frame. Ayaw niyang makita. Ayaw niyang maging obvious. 
because he was at risk of being ridiculed by people, maging laughing stock siya ng mga tao. Ah, pandak kasi, kaya kailangan umakyat, di ba? He wanted to not draw attention to himself. And yet, when Jesus reached the spot, imagine natin, naglakad si Jesus. He stopped, look up, and maybe eye-to-eye contact na silang dalawa. Jesus called him. Jesus noticed him. When I think he was not expecting to be noticed, Jesus noticed him. Kaba na yan, tugtug, tugtug. Bakit, bakit kaya nakatingin to sa akin? Then, the second one is Zacchaeus. Jesus addressed him by his name. In a time and place where he, he was probably name-called already, like, you traitor, you cheat, nobody wanted to call him by his name. Jesus knew his name and addressed him by his name. Siguro naisip niya, I think, it's, I think I can forget the time that people called me by my name. They only called me by how they call me, but not my name. But Jesus knew his name and addressed him by his name. The third one is Jesus self-invited himself to his house. I must stay at your house today. Can you remember, sabi ko nga kanina, siguro yung bahay niya is a symbol of corruption and greed. People would not like to be in that house, even see the house. Kung pwede, may barikada yan, barikid nila yan para ayaw na nang makita kasi nagagalit sila pag nakikita nila yan, yung bahay na yan. But yet, Jesus chose to stay in that house. Can you imagine that? Kung isipin natin parang, talaga no? Why ah? Why ah? But in the next few verses, as we unravel these verses, I want us to think about this. I want you to see and notice how different Jesus treated Zacchaeus compared to how the other people treated him. And of course, at this point, I'd like to tell you, I wouldn't blame the people also because he was cheating on them, Right? And even if at this point it was in a very emotional state, he would have been surprised. I tell you, not only Zacchaeus was surprised. We'll see that two verses down, but let's tackle the next verse first. All right, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Of course, in a society where no one wants to associate with you, no one wants to socialize with you, ayong makakape-kape with you, of course, you would be excited, especially superstar to. Right? So he welcomed him glad. And I think he was genuinely glad. Like I said, something here was probably inside Zacchaeus' heart and Zacchaeus' mind because he was genuinely glad. It was recorded in the Bible. If he wasn't glad, it wouldn't be right, written that way. And now down to the next verse, verse 7. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Hindi pala si Zacchaeus lang yung surprised. The people around him, the crowd that was with Jesus, with his followers, were, every, were all surprised because of this. Imagine natin, no? Ganito na lang, imagine tayo, naglakad si Jesus. He looked up, he said, Zacchaeus, I think everybody quieted down. I think everybody quieted down. Anticipating, siguro sa mind nila, ayan na. Iri-rebuke na to ni Rabbi. Kasi alam ni Jesus na cheater yan. Iri-rebuke na yan. So they were quiet and waiting for the next line of Jesus. So Jesus' words here wouldn't have been clearer because everybody was silent. And yet, what did he say? Come down, I must stay with you today. What? So do you think Jesus was oblivious to the comments of the crowds? I don't think so. Omniscient siya eh. He knew. And do you think Jesus was not aware of Zacchaeus' actions? Of course, he knew. Jesus chose to treat Zacchaeus differently from how the other people treated him. In this scenario, you can see that there is a stark difference between what the people of Jericho and what Jesus saw in Zacchaeus. Right? Magkaiba talaga. There is something here that Jesus was seeing that people were not. Otherwise, he wouldn't have treated the same Zacchaeus the same way. He would treat it the same way as the people did at that time. And why do you think that is? It's because the Lord sees the intrinsic value, something that probably we don't see because we created our own criteria of that value. God sees our intrinsic value. And if you think 
it's only applicable to Zacchaeus centuries back. It's also the same. The Lord already said it. If you can remember, while the prophet Samuel was asked by the Lord to anoint the next king of Israel, Samuel was looking at all of Jesse's son, and he was inclined to go for the eldest, kasi yung eldest matipo. No, guapo, six-pack. And then he was saying, oh, this is very kingly in stature. And yet, what did the Lord tell him? Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Isn't that encouraging to us, guys? Isn't that, my friends, you, look at this this way. Look at it this way. Even during the time when you yourself will write to describe yourself of somebody of, of no value, God looks at you differently. God sees you and me for our intrinsic value, the value that He has given to each one of us. Tayong lahat, iba iba, yung value natin, the Lord. And because He's the one who created us, we're all His masterpiece. He gave His signature. Like a painter, He put His signature on us. If you don't believe that, there's no one same DNA. That's God's signature. Each of us are unique and original. It should encourage us, brothers and sisters. So let's move on. Uh, when, when they had finished their dinner and all this, Zacchaeus in verse 8, he said, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Kung ano man yung pinag-usapan ni Jesus and Zacchaeus during their time of fellowship over dinner, it transformed Zacchaeus. Whatever that was, something happened. Zacchaeus will never be the same. Look at how he reacted. So imagine what, it must have been a beautiful encounter. Right? If you look at it, Jesus was saying something in here. If you look at our verse 5, I'll, I'll flash back verse 5 again. Notice how Jesus said, I must stay at your house. I checked translations, many translations, must talaga yan. I even checked the Greek. It's must day. So it, it did not even, Jesus did not even say, I want to. Can I stay at your house? No. He said, I must stay at your, at your house today. And this tells us something. Because Jesus saw that Zacchaeus had in his heart, he wanted that encounter with Christ. And I tell you what, God acknowledged it. God acknowledged it. And when God saw that desire in his heart to reach out, I tell you, God was saying, no, I'm not going to let this opportunity go. I will Go and grab this opportunity. I want to bring, win back this lost soul. Telling you, if we reach out to God, we're going to have that encounter. He ain't going to let you go because he's, you're precious to him. God sees you through to your true value. All it takes is that we reach out. We have that desire to connect with Him. He said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 to 13, He said, Call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All it takes is a heart that wants to reach out to Him. Let's go to the last two verses. Jesus said to him, when he said all this, when Jesus saw the transformation, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Here's what I need you to understand, brothers and sisters. Jesus, or God, came out of heaven, put himself in the bounds of time and space. He had to live through the difficulties of living in the flesh and living in this fallen world. Why? Why do you think that is? Because he knew we cannot go up there. So he decided to go down here. Doesn't that tell you anything about pursuing you? Diba? Yung nag, 
yung mga married, yung mga, may mga girlfriends, when your boyfriend or your husband was courting you, they will say they will move heaven and earth just to be with you. If that made you get the chills, oh, kilig. Dapat mas makilig tayo sa Panginoon because of what He did if you only realize that. Dapat kiligin tayo. He opened heaven, went down to be with us. So, you, you ask, how precious are we really to Him? Ano ba talaga value natin? How precious are we to Him? That is how much we are worth to Him. No matter what people may say about you, no matter what the negative things that people will label us with, Jesus was saying, hey, no matter what people have labeled you, no matter how bad people think you are, I will still make the ultimate sacrifice for you because you are worth it. And only when you realize that will you be able to put into your heart the words when Jesus said, love your neighbors as yourself. Because you ought to love the people that God loves. And that means your neighbor. Everyone, each one of us here, it are all significant and loved by God. So you think it's expensive? You think to yourself, is it expensive? No. I wouldn't call it expensive because expensive can still be quantified by numbers. To me, that's literally priceless. Because there's no amount of zeros that can quantify that. No one can ever afford that. No one could ever outdo that. Ever, ever, ever. When he said, it is finished, it is finished. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. And he said, he was telling, when he was telling Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house, he, was just, he wasn't just telling Zacchaeus. He wasn't just telling Zacchaeus' household. He was telling everyone in that area. He was telling everyone. And he's telling us now that my love for you the value that I put in you transcends all the criteria that you have placed upon yourselves. I don't look at that because I see your value, because I made you. I know how much you are worth. Always remember this, God sees you through to your true value. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise because God said it. So brothers and sisters, let us not be hang up with the comments ng mga tao around us. Why do I say that? Sa Pinas nga, kung contest, 10% lang po ang audience impact. It shouldn't, it should only have, if it it even matters to us, it should only matter a little bit. What matters, my friends, let's focus on what really matters. And what matters is how God sees us. So as I end, Let me just flash a slide. If you have already taken part one of session two, this slide would be familiar. And I'm just putting it here just to refresh our minds. And I want us to reflect on those verses because that shows how much God values us. God sees you through to your true value. So what do we do? What do we do? Draw closer to God. Why? When you draw closer to God, will you have a better alignment of how God sees? Sabi nga nila, yung mag-asawa, at some point, magkapalit na yung mukha. Right? Because of the intimacy between them. At some point, they will think as one unit, as one cell. And it's the same with a relationship with God. When you draw closer to Him, when we spend time with Him, we're going to a point where we can see things the way God sees. God sees others, how God sees the world, and how God sees you. Remember kanina, I was showing you that side mirror thing sa koche. Maybe we should also do the same thing to help remind us, kasi because we're so forgetful creatures. Eh. We forget God's value of us. So probably we can do Suggestion lang po is you put something like this. The person in this mirror is more valuable than he or she appears. So that you are reminded that your value is not only limited to what you can see in the mirror. There's something more in there 
because God placed it there, your intrinsic value. One thing I want to um, make you realize also, share ko lang sa inyo, Zacchaeus' name, Zacchaeus' name, it means clean and innocent. It would have been very ironic for the people during that time. The people, the crowd saw Zacchaeus based on what he was. But Jesus saw what he could be, clean and innocent in his eyes. My friends, brothers and sisters, and also if you're watching us online, if you have that encounter with God, once you realize your true worth to God, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your decisions and the way you look at life. Thank you, Lord, for your love. That even during the time that I wasn't yet formed, your eyes already saw our unformed bodies. All the days ordained to us were written already in your book before one of them ever came to be. You saw our weaknesses. You saw our failures, Lord. But yet, you decided to still create me. In, in fact, you created my inmost being. You knit me together, Lord. You knit us together in our mother's womb. And I praise you, Lord, because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You listen to me intently, Lord, that before words is on my tongue, Lord, you already know it completely. And I praise you, dear Father, because you are always with us. If we go up to the heavens, Lord, you are there. If we make our beds in the depths, Lord, you are there. There is nowhere that we can run from your spirit. There is nowhere we can flee. We can flee from your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you have given to each one of us. I pray, Father, that as we depart from this place, O oh Lord, Help us, rem remind us, Lord, each and every day of how valuable we are so we too, Lord, can receive your love in its fullness and be able to reflect that love, Lord, to everyone around us, Lord. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name, amen.